Good afternoon. We're out and about in District 3 today, uh, visiting a place that's quite close to our hearts. It's the Remnants War Museum. We've been here before, a couple of years ago, but we thought it was important to come back and revisit. So this museum opened for the first time in 1975 and it was actually at that time called the USM Puppets Museum. And so that, of course, you can imagine what that was about. Um, but as relations normalized, they changed the name a couple of times and now it's got the name that it has. Um, this is probably one of the most difficult vlogs that I will make. Um, and it's a little bit distressing for me as well. My father was drafted into the army at 19 years old and, um, you know, from my age, you can imagine it was the Vietnam War. Um, and unfortunately, 13 years ago in October, I lost my father to... <laughs> I lost my father to cancer caused by the Agent Orange that was dropped by the US military. Fifteen years ago in October, I lost my father to cancer that was caused by the Agent Orange that was dropped by the US military during the war. <laughs> this museum has a lot of exhibitions and a lot of photos of the damage that Agent Orange has caused in Vietnam. And so it is a place that is very difficult for me to visit and I'll probably have to take a few stops along the way to make it through. But anyway, I'll tell you more about my father's story in, after we have a look around. Hello. Hello. Two, please. Two, please. Thank you, madam. Some of the terrible weaponry used in war, a flamethrower. Can you imagine? Really shocking. So the museum was 40,000 dong each to enter. Um, you can also sign up here for 80,000 dong for an audio tour where they'll give you a headset and you can understand the exhibitions a bit better. Um, everything's quite well documented though and written in English and Vietnamese. It's a very touching museum, that's for sure. And it's on three levels. So we've come into this part of the uh, museum where the effects of Agent Orange are detailed. The US Army used these, these uh, chemicals on the Vietnamese from 1961 to 1971. And in fact, they sprayed about 80 million liters of chemicals on the forests and the farmland in the country. Now the idea of the Agent Orange wasn't to directly poison soldiers, their own or the Vietnamese, it was to defoliate the forests so they could see the enemy 
to then attack them. Unfortunately, the effects of Agent Orange are horrifying. And if you did come in contact with it, it burnt your skin, it burnt your lungs, and it left terrible injuries for those yet born. As you can see, the birth defects were horrific. At the time, it wasn't well documented that this could happen. However, I'm pretty sure any educated person could guess if you drop toxic chemicals where people live, it's going to have terrible repercussions. So this room uh, shows us the impressions through the eyes of children who live through these terrible times. Unfortunately, the horrors of war continue long after the war is finished and also impacts greatly people who took no part in the war. Unexploded ordnance leaves a terrible aftermath. Horrifically, war atrocities were committed by both sides on each other. The North on the South, the South on the North, the Americans on the Vietnamese, the Vietnamese on the Americans. War, a very sad man's game. And this was the aim of the Agent Orange, to lay bare the forest. Unfortunately, the consequences went far beyond. And everyone paid the price. And many are still paying the price today. Forests left bare so enemies could see each other. Enemies as dictated by governments, not by people as is usually the case with war. So Stephanie, it's very confronting in there, isn't it? Yeah, um, and it also seems so strange to me that I see like um, people on tours that are about to go see the puppet show and see other things around town after coming to this museum. Uh, I recommend if you do come here, um, give yourself a break and come take it in and then, you know, maybe stop and digest it. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. Um, it just brings home to me that, you know, governments make decisions and also there are a few people who profit from war, but they are never the ones who suffer. Um, and I think that this war was a um, good example of that because, you know, a lot of people suffered, millions of people suffered on every side um, and they weren't the ones that made the decisions. My dad was 19, as I said, when he got drafted into the army. My older sister had already been born and he was working, you know, some menial job in the country town in the USA. And whenever he got the call, um, as many people do, he just did what they asked him to do. And he never returned to Vietnam after he was here as a soldier. But he had a lot of health problems throughout my life. His first heart attack was when I was seven years old and he had a lot of surgeries. And in every morphine-endorsed dream, he returned to Vietnam. <laughs> so, he did want to come back, but he was already too sick when I started traveling and when I was living in Laos, and he always said, oh, it would be great if we could go together. And 
I kind of put off going to Vietnam. I put it off thinking maybe one day he'd be healthy enough. I also put it off because I was afraid to come here. Not because I was afraid of Vietnamese people or anything like that, but because I was afraid of my emotions and I was afraid it would be a very sad place for me to be. So I actually didn't come to Vietnam until 2019, which is just a few years ago. And I fell in love with the place and it's not a sad place at all, even as I sit here crying because I've been in some place that's sad. The Vietnamese are very forward-looking people. They're optimistic and they have their eyes set firmly on a bright future for themselves, and that is awesome for them. It would be really easy to come to this country and never be confronted by what happened here, and it would be very easy to ignore it, but we shouldn't. We should come and we should remind ourselves because, you know, as the cliche goes, those who don't know history are destined to repeat it. Well, with all the wars that happen over and over again, that's what I feel like. And so it is very important that we come here and that we see the horror that war creates for people who did not, did not invite it in. Well, as you can see, it's a very emotional place for Steph to come. Um, for me, I don't have any ties to Vietnam in this way. Um, however, it's very touching. The museum itself is very distressing. Make sure you spend some time to absorb it. And even if you don't like these kinds of museums, we really recommend you come and visit it. You'll understand Vietnam better and they deserve that respect. So we've just finished walking around the museum and we're finishing up. Um, it would be easy to, for some people to dismiss this as communist propaganda, but I really don't think that's fair. I think that the photos speak for themselves. And I think a museum like this, um, regardless of the way it's premised, gives a voice to the voiceless and the victims of this, this war. And so for that reason alone, I believe you should come here and you should have a look and see what happened during those years in Vietnam. Well guys, yeah. thanks for watching this vlog. It's quite a departure from our usual vlogs, but it needed to be done. And um, it held a very uh, touching spot in Steph's heart. You know, she lost her father a few years ago. And um, yeah, it was due to Agent Orange and the cancer that it caused. So um, very sorry about that. And hope you enjoyed the vlog and hope you learned something. And if you come to Vietnam, please come here. So. We're Girls on the Loose. We are. We're Girls on the Loose. Please like and subscribe. And we'll time. catch you next time. Bye bye. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Very really happy. Very nice lovely. to meet you, sir. Very lovely. <laughs> I love Vietnam. Yes, we love Vietnam <laughs> yeah. too. Okay.